Good day, we're about to meet Stare Sen. Good day and welcome to Stare in Sápmi, also known as Östersund in the Sámi part of Sweden. First, I want to express my gratitude to the Scottish Civic Trust for inviting me to hold this lecture as a part of the lecture series on heritage, equity and the climate crisis. My topic is uh, surviving climate change, the importance of speaking about Sami cultural heritage sites, in which I will try to describe how the Sami traditional way of relating to cultural heritage sites stresses the need for keeping the stories and myths alive. My name is Jarki Bexielius, and I'm proud to introduce myself as the Oivie, the CEO of the Sami Foundation Galtje. The foundation is well known for its uh, work in documenting Sami cultural heritage and through different projects developing Sami society, culture and language. Presently, we are working on establishing a Sami museum in Stade. Some 20 years ago, the members of the Sami villages of Harjedalen, in a judicial process instigated by landowners, were asked to show physical proof of their presence since time immemorial, in this case defined as 93 years. Due to the Sami traditional relation to nature and land, the Samis did not succeed. Subsequently, the court decided in favor of the landowners. The Sami belief is this. We are responsible for enabling nature to recur. Look at the landscape in, the, in this picture. This is what it used to be. This is what it is. And this is uh, what we want it to be. You should leave no traces. According to our tradition, the next generation should find the area in the same shape as you did and with the same prospects as you did when for the first time setting foot in the area. Let us start with the basics. Who are the Samis? The Samis are a recognized unique people living in the northern parts of four countries, Sweden, Norway, Finland, and the Kola Peninsula in Russia. The Sami people is the only recognized indigenous people of Europe as well as of three of the four countries, with Russia the exception. The Samis consider themselves as distinctively different, having their own history, their own culture, their own language, their own ambitions, their own values, and their own perspectives. For Samis, the transfer of traditions and traditional knowledge to younger generations is very important, and also stressed in discussions development plans and other strategic documents. So the topic for my lecture is uh, surviving climate change, the importance of speaking about Sami cultural heritage sites. What then is a Sami cultural heritage site? In the Sami context, we speak about material, biological and Im immaterial cultural heritage but recognizes, of course, that it is not always easy to divide and or categorize them. Material cultural heritage could be physical constructions, like the fence for the meadow where reindeer are being gathered for different events, such as, for example, the marking of the cows, or like in this picture, the gotje, which is the traditional family hut, or, the storage for food and other valuable items. They could also be the degenerated physical constructions, like the old living site like in this picture, which used to accommodate a hut from which the wood and the peat have now degraded. Biological cultural heritage could be a milk pit, a naturally formed or dig pit 
for storing milk over the winter or a religious site like here in the, in the shape of a big stone. The immaterial cultural heritage is all the stories and myths that are connected to the specific heritage. In some ways, perhaps a religious site to a great extent could be considered immaterial heritage. There are different views on the definition and the need of a definition of Sami cultural heritage sites. Presently, the responsibility for cultural heritage sites is owned in the Swedish part of Sápmi by the Swedish authorities, the Swedish National Heritage Board, and on regional level, the county administrative boards. In their strategies, there are limited regulations specifically related to the Sámi cultural heritage that instead are being treated as any other cultural heritage. Cynically, one can claim that this leads to a risk of the Sami cultural heritage being overlooked or forgotten, which in turn can lead to a further loss of knowledge about them. Supporting their execution is the legislation for cultural environments, the legislation for planning and construction, the legislation for conservation, and the legislation for forestry. The authority, the Sami parliament is in this regard only a supportive organ, giving the other Sami views and perspectives on strategic plans and measures. Obviously, this means there is a lack of Sami power in the management of the Sami cultural heritage. Lack of Sami power means overlooking the differences in views and perspectives leaving the Sami cultural heritage at risk of being treated in the same way as other cultural heritage and imposed, imposed upon measures that are not in accordance with the tradition or cultural needs. Lack of emphasis on Sami cultural heritage can put them even further at risk from being ruined from, for example, failing or infrastructural development. In order to increase knowledge about Sami cultural landscape and heritage and to stress the importance of specific treatment, we and other Sami organizations every five years initiates and leads the work with a program for handling the Sami cultural landscape. The program focuses on protecting and preserving the Sami cultural landscape and heritage, suggesting strategic measures, responsibilities, ambitions and goals. According to the Sami parliament, the definition of Sami cultural heritage is, and quote, the culture and history of the Sami people in a geographical context. The cultural heritage reflects time past, but is also the base for the Sami philosophy and the current Sami society and culture. End of quotation. The definition underlines geography and access to traditional lands and nature as closely related to the history and the philosophy. Samis have always been identifying and monitoring climate change and its effects. These are increased temperature leading to drought with springs petering and difficulties for the reindeer finding snow for cool. Extreme weather with frequent changes in temperature from plus to minus, from minus to plus, affecting accessibility to grazing, for example. Changing growth with trees growing on higher altitude, damaging first and foremost the biological heritage. New and more insects spreading new diseases among the reindeer but also among people. The climate, change if affects, the climate change effects affect all the different types of Sami cultural heritage. Our material heritage, such as tipis, storages, etc., are being affected by moisture and mold leading to degradation. Our biological heritage are being affected by invading growth 
such as trees, grass, and others, or by, as in the case of the high snow, simply disappearing because of rising temperatures. The immaterial cultural heritage is also being affected, but, but perhaps more as a result of the degradation in the others. The material and biological heritage works as platforms for the immaterial heritage to be carried to generations to come. Barchan, a significant cultural heritage site of the Sami village where I personally have my roots, was the subject for study in the ADAPT Northern Heritage Project a few years ago. Here, all the examples of effects of climate change can be found. In our traditional Gwotje, the tipi, we easily find proof of how the wooden structures are being attacked by moistures, by moisture, sometimes causing mold. Using the Gwotje, we also experience moisture in, in, in that it is more difficult to handle the open fire. While using the fire, we can experience lots of uh, smoke coming from the, the walls of the Gwotje. Though we have not seen it in this particular spring yet, we recognize how access to water is changing. We believe this is because of the temperature increasing. Losing a spring is a big problem, as access to water once was one of the main reasons for choosing the site in the first place. Since 20 years back, the Sami village has had to focus on handling the invasive growth, for example, with trees that once was not to be seen on this altitude, now growing in excess and in turn bringing increased numbers of or new types of insects, harming both humans and the reindeer. The climate change effects affect the reindeer, causing them to move for better areas. Reindeer herders are subject to how the reindeer adjusts to climate change effects and other and therefore may find it necessary to abandon a specific area, leaving the cultural heritage site to its own fate while following the reindeer to other pastures. In the historical context, and in a situation where there is limited competition for land, leaving a site would be considered normal and according to the belief in the recurring cycle. In this context, the idea would be to let the site go back to what it used to be with no traces of human activity, long before being cultivated by the Samis. Samis would also be safe in knowing that the sites, although degraded, would be left unharmed and not subject to excessive or damaging use by others. In the modern context, where competition for land is strong, protecting cultural heritage sites is important and high on the agenda of the Sami society. This is, of course, important from a pers personal perspective. Probably no man would want the land or cultural heritage of his or her ancestors or relatives to be destroyed. It is also important from the collective perspective. Protecting the cultural heritage sites is fundamental for the survival of the culture. Furthermore, the Sami cultural heritage sites can be considered as important for the cause of claiming rights to land and self-governance, and therefore should be protected for, for their own sake. Climate change effects put the Sami society in a challenging situation. Should we stick to our tradition and let climate change effects uh, affect at a faster pace the culturally important sites so that they go back to what they once were and become difficult for the untrained eye to see? Or should we recognize the modern context and strategically work on maintaining these sites? If we choose the latter, the need for long-term measures and resources will be strong and raise expectations on the majority society to provide them. If we choose the former, we need to put great emphasis on keeping the knowledge about the sites and make sure that it's, it is transferred to the younger generations. In indigenous cultures, as well as the Sami culture, the spoken word is fundamental in keeping traditions and knowledge alive. Material or biological cultural heritage are important 
but cannot stand alone in this sense. Hence, the title of this lecture is Surviving Climate Change, the importance of speaking about Sami cultural heritage. What are the cornerstones of the Sami perspectives on the cultural landscape and heritage? The Sami cultural heritage can be defined through different definitions and descriptions. The Sami parliament defines the Sami cultural heritage as the culture and history of the Sami people in a geographical context. The cultural heritage reflects time past, but is also the base for the Sami philosophy and the current Sami society and culture. This definition is connected to the view of the Samis and other indigenous peoples on life and existence, whereas nature, the landscape, and mankind are connected to each other and inseparable. That is, our belief in holism is fundamental to our culture and history. Following this, our perspective is that all is environmentally related and changes in any of the constituents will affect the others. Undoubtedly, climate change and its effects will change the balance of this system, putting people as well as cultural heritage sites under new and tough challenges. A common saying sap me is, our nature is our culture, stressing that culture is based on nature and its qualities. If nature is damaged, so is our culture. This has effects on present day, but maybe more so on our future situation. We believe in a recurring life. What we do today will reward or punish us tomorrow. Important is the focus that we put on securing the prerequisites for younger generations so that they will have the same prospects, possibilities, and opportunities as if we did growing up. We shall leave an area just as it was when we once conquered it. Going back to my introduction about the trial in Haridala, of course the reindeer herders could not prove their presence since time immemorial. Their whole belief has always been to minimize their effects on nature and the traces that they leave. For many, the reindeer herding is the symbol of Sami culture. Working in nature, it is the reindeer herders that are the first to see and acknowledge changes in the landscape and the climate. Concerning the Sami cultural landscape, it is important to understand that to a great extent, the reindeer decides. According to the tradition, as well as the law, the reindeer is considered a domestic animal, also a migrating animal, moving between the mountains in the summer and the forests in the winter, constantly looking for areas, ensuring security from outer threats, such as predators or extreme wind and weather conditions, for areas giving access to grazing and water, or for, access, for areas ensuring accessibility to snow for cool and, and thus protection against insects. Many, almost all, obviously traditional Sami cultural heritage sites have emerged in places that, based on the needs, can accommodate the reindeer in the best possible way. Few sites have been chosen by the people for their own needs, and few Sami cultural heritage sites exist on their own merits. They have been cultivated for the cause of managing the reindeer. Once the reindeer needs to find better areas, the reindeer herder need to and will follow. Traditionally, going back to a time when there was little competition for these areas, the reindeer moving to find be better areas would not have been seen as troublesome, but normal and something that would have or could have occurred once or several times during the life of a herder. Today, with the ever-growing climate-related changes, these situations can be more common. In the modern world where competing interests such as tourism and the development of wind turbines constantly are demanding more space and competing for, those, for these areas moving to establish a new site is becoming more and more difficult. Simply, it might not be possible to find new sites. Material and biological cultural heritage are important in themselves, 
but are being enhanced by the philosophy, knowledge, and stories that they carry and canalize. It is also the other way around. With the degradation of physical cultural heritage, the philosophy, the knowledge, and the stories risk losing its plat platform and disappearing and never again being told. This, this could lead to a loss of knowledge about the land, the people, and the important events connected to the site. In their strategic document, the Sami parliament declares the importance of transferring of traditional knowledge. Hence, the immaterial cultural heritage is fundamental. It will ensure our kids to learn about our history and traditions, about the people and the myths and knowledge for building traditional constructions and handicraft. In this way, the immaterial cultural heritage is key to the transition of our culture to younger generations and thus a key to the survival of the Sami culture. We, the Foundation Galti, as well as other Sami organizations, directs great measures toward examining and documenting the Sami cultural heritage sites through stories about the place, but also about the people and the events. Most important though, are the, the conversations between generations. Do we need physical cultural heritage for our culture to live on if the elders shared their knowledge, stories and myths? Do we need physical cultural heritage if the young ones promise to listen? Geisto, thanks for listening. For more information, please look into our website or send me an email. Thanks again.